and Greg Anderson, a Nebraska farmer, is joining us, member of the Nebraska Biodiesel Board. And uh, Greg, we've talked about how this is helping the bottom line of farmers, but again, need to have those markets. And you and I have talked about this for a number of years. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we focus on what happens in our backyard, if you will, but right. really the bigger story is what happens on the coast, especially now this time of the year in the east, but a lot of times in the west coast. Uh, talk, talk about how that is, is helping with demand. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. Great success, success story for biodiesel and for agriculture in general. Let's start on the west coast this time. California now, in 2019, is using 25% of all the biodiesel produced in the United States. They want more biodiesel. They want it yesterday. They want it immediately, if not sooner. And the reason that they're using primarily biodiesel, not only because of all the benefits that it provides uh, for uh, performance and, you know, uh, uh, engine, you can put it in your engine with no modifications and all that, mm -hmm. that's all great. But they're looking at reducing carbon and they want to get to net zero carbon or as close to that as possible just as soon as they can, especially by the year 2025 and 2030. And they have some strict uh, standards as far as emissions, more strict than we do here in the Midwest, mm -hmm. in Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa. And biodiesel has proven that it performs well, meets those standards, and is used now uh, to a great degree in California. That market will continue to grow. So that state is really leading. And also the states, neighboring, neighboring states of Oregon and Washington, very environmentally conscious, very much want to get to that net zero carbon emissions, and uh, they're following California. So that's a great success mm -hmm. story. And I think we on the Western soy side are positioning well. We can, we can move soybean oil out there uh, via rail uh, very well. Then the East Coast, uh, we're going to be there. Everybody's saying we're going to have a bad winter. And I think we've already had enough bad yeah. winter for my liking. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're blending biodiesel with heating oil and calling it bioheat. And uh, with that, it's uh, providing heating for millions of homes, buildings. The biggest emissions that come uh, for uh, petroleum that really come out of buildings. And so mm -hmm. when they switch to a, a B20 and they have goals to, to go to B50 by 2030, that really knocks down the emissions, reduces oh. greenhouse gas, reduces carbon that's going up in the air. And so uh, we have great, have great success stories with the uh, fleets in New York City, Port Authority is using it in all of their snow removal equipment at the airports, B-20 during the winter. I mean, what a testimony to the confidence that consumers have in biodiesel. Don't let them down. All right, Greg. Always good to catch up with you. Thanks for all your work. And again, more good news uh, for uh, the nation's soybean farmers with biodiesel. So Greg Anderson, Nebraska farmer, thanks. Thanks, Ken. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Yes.